Red Bull Racing look to be running away with the Constructors' Championship for the first time since 2013, and I'll let you decide if that's down to their own brilliance or due to the fact that Ferrari has so much pit wall incompetence. However, one thing that's greatly helped Red Bull is their brilliant driver lineup, made of the love child of Christian Horner and helmet Marco Max Verstappen and the Mexican Minister of Defense Sergio Perez. The Red Bull drivers work well together and never squabble on track, but that might just be due to the fact that Verstappen tends to spend most of the races at least half a lap ahead of the pack. And even when they could battle or create drama, they never do, unlike the Ferrari duo at Silverstone or the Mercedes pair at Zandvoort. Both of the Red Bull drivers have had great careers, leading them to their current place within the Red Bull team. Verstappen is clearly the team leader, being the reigning world champion and current driver championship leader, and he has a long contract with Red Bull, which will likely see him accumulate many more race wins and titles with the team. Meanwhile, Sergio Perez spent the vast majority of his early career as one of the best drivers in the midfield. However, he looked like he had lost his place in F1 at the end of 2020 despite the fact that he won the Sakir Grand Prix that year with Racing Point. But despite that, his career almost came to an end because Papa Stroll had a desire to see his son driving with aging former world champions, a theme that will continue next season with Fernando Alonso. So Red Bull have the dream driver lineup, featuring a generational talent to lead the team and a solid driver who's happy to be number two as long as it guarantees his spot in the sport. Perez has seemed to squash the curse of the second Red Bull driver, which has struck the likes of Gasly, Albon and Kivat. However, many have been disappointed by Perez's results so far this season, even though he has the same number of points as the driver in second, Charles Leclerc. Perez has been on podium at seven of the 15 races so far this season, including Monaco, where he won the prestigious Monaco Grand Prix for the first time. Unsurprisingly, that was due to a Ferrari blunder. But Perez had a tough run going into the summer break. He retired at Red Bull's home race in Austria and finished outside the top three in France and Hungary. But following the summer break, Perez finished second in Spa, and whilst this might look like a good result in paper, Max Verstappen beat him to the win by almost 18 seconds, despite the fact that Max also started in 14th whilst Perez started on the front row. Verstappen's win in Belgium was his third win in a row whilst not starting on pole position, but also with his current form, Verstappen could probably start from the pit lane and still win. The Dutchman makes it seem like he's playing the F1 game on easy difficulty. At his home race in Zandvoort, Verstappen started on pole, and it was his toughest race of the season. And the team that was making it so difficult for him was, surprisingly, Mercedes and not Ferrari. But they also made the strategy error. And this error led to Verstappen winning the race, adding to his 10 of 15 races that he's won so far this season. Plus, he's only had two DNFs this season so far, first in the season opener in Bahrain, and then at the Australian Grand Prix in April. Verstappen currently has 300 10 points and could win the title for the second year in a row in just a few races time. The FIA might as well already start engraving his name onto a trophy as it's getting very close to being mathematically impossible for anybody else to win. As of recording this, Verstappen is currently 109 points clear of both Perez and Leclerc. And by the time you're watching this and Monza happened, he's probably even further ahead. But despite the sizable point difference between Verstappen and his teammate Perez, Perez is still a good driver and a great asset to the Red Bull team. Perez had an amazing 2020 season driving for the Racing Point team who were in the midfield, or maybe slightly more competitive due to their Tracing Point or Pink Mercedes era. In the pandemic-affected season, Perez finished fourth, ironically behind Verstappen. But he did beat Alex Albon, who was Verstappen's teammate at the time, by 20 points. This helped Perez to get his seat at Red Bull, which meant that he was racing for the Milton Keynes based team for the 2021 season. 2021 got off to a tough start for Perez as he adapted to the Red Bull car, and he didn't stand on the podium at any of the first five rounds, despite the fact that Verstappen either won or finished second at these five Grand Prix. Perez took his first Red Bull podium at Baku, a track that he has historically good results with, and his first podium with Red Bull was also his first win. However, this was mostly due to Verstappen's tyre exploding and Hamilton forgetting to turn left at the red flag restart. It was still a great result for Perez, who took his second Red Bull podium in the following round as well. However, Red Bull was still yet to see Perez's greatest contribution to the team in 2021. In Turkey and Abu Dhabi, Perez held off Hamilton amazingly, which helped Verstappen win the world championship. And this has continued. Perez's 2022 season has been so far pretty solid, with so far his highlight being his win in Monaco. And Perez alongside Verstappen has also helped the team take many 1-2 finishes in Emilia Romagna, Spain, Azerbaijan and Belgium. And the 1-2 finish at Imola was a team first since 2016, and seconds well within Perez's reach, as he's currently second in the standings drawn with Charles Leclerc. And if Ferrari don't sort themselves out, which is highly likely with Matteo 
Matteo Bonotto and the rest of the strategy team at the helm, he probably will get that second place. His biggest challenge going into these final couple of races might actually be Mercedes, which you can find out all about in this video here. But despite being a great member of the team, Perez is nowhere near as good as Verstappen, who's already cementing himself in F1 as an all-time great. Max has been an exceptional driver for the majority of his 156 F1 races, with the only slight blot on his CV being his poor run at the start of the 2018 season. However, it's easy to forget that Verstappen is just 24 years of age, and he was thrust into the pinnacle of motorsport in just his second single seat a season. Try saying that 10 times fast. Verstappen had just one season in F3 to learn the art of racing, before skipping F2 and going straight into F1 with the Red Bull-owned Toro Rosso team. In 2015, which was his first season in F1, he took two fourth-place finishes in the lower midfield car to beat his highly rated teammate Carlos Sainz. The following year saw the Red Bull merry-go-round, with Marco and Horner swapping Kvyat for Verstappen at the top team after just four races. Verstappen won his first race with Red Bull at the 2016 Spanish Grand Prix and had a standout race at the 2016 Brazilian Grand Prix. This is where he fought through the field and made a miraculous save in the rain. He won two races in 2017, but finished behind his more experienced teammate Daniel Ricciardo. The following year, Verstappen won two races, but he did manage to finish ahead of Ricciardo. After that, Ricciardo left the team at the end of the year as he felt that the team saw Verstappen as their top priority, which we all know now is true and pretty well warranted. Max won three races in a season for the first time in 2019 whilst his teammates struggled with Gasly being swapped for Albon in the middle of the season. In 2020, hybrid era Mercedes did what hybrid era Mercedes did best and dominated the year. But Verstappen did manage to win two races, impressively managing his tyres to win the 70th anniversary of the Grand Prix at Silverstone and also dominating the final round of the year at Abu Dhabi. The last round of 2020 set the tone for 2021 as Verstappen and Red Bull looked ready to fight for the front in the final year of the previous set of regulations. The 2021 season had many controversial moments involving Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton, but the fact that Verstappen won 10 races, took 10 pole positions, and led more laps than every other driver combined was pretty impressive. And on top of that, Verstappen finished on the podium at every single race excluding one, minus any DNFs that he got. And the one race that he didn't step on the podium was the Hungarian Grand Prix, where Valtteri Bottas decided he wanted to go bowling instead of racing. Verstappen is looking more than likely to become a two-time champion this season, with it looking increasingly unlikely that Perez would be able to win one in his career. Whilst Verstappen is at the team, Perez would have had to have the perfect season just to have a chance at challenging Verstappen. And even then, the team would likely use team orders, which Perez has shown that he's happy to execute to maximize Max's points. Verstappen is likely to be at Red Bull for longer than Perez, and even if Verstappen left prematurely, the Mercedes and Ferrari drivers would be tough competition for Perez if they were given adequate machinery or strategy. Many people also believe that the Red Bull car is deliberately built to suit Verstappen's driving style, but Christian Horner has denied this. However, the RB18, as well as its predecessor, is more prone to oversteer, which Verstappen prefers. And Verstappen and Perez's preferences do not match, with the Mexican preferring understeer. The team are also more likely to take advice on upgrades from the driver of the most points, which is Verstappen, meaning the car will become more and more suited to Max over the course of a season. This could also explain why Perez has struggled in more recent races whilst Verstappen is at his best. Verstappen also never seems to be phased by any battles or weather conditions. He's always getting his head down and putting in a great race. Helmut Marko has echoed this sentiment in the past, stating that Perez is less able to deal with the car in extreme conditions. When questioned on the difference in performance levels of his drivers, Horner simply states just how good Verstappen was on the day, rather than mentioning Perez's inability to challenge him. Perez is 32 and in his 12th season in F1, meaning that he's very experienced, and he may also know where he lies within the series. He may know that his chances of challenging Verstappen are very small, and he may just want some standout results such as his Monaco Grand Prix win to stay happy and keep his place within Red Bull. Perez will place particular weight on the upcoming Mexican Grand Prix as he would love to win his home race before he retires. I mean, can you imagine his dad's wholesome reaction? Perez is very patriotic and a proud Mexican. He has a big Mexican fan base and brings an array of Mexican sponsors to the team. Perez's sponsors are worth over 10 million a year to Red Bull, and so this is another reason why Red Bull are comfortable having Perez in his seat. He does exactly what they want and he brings loads of money to the team. And on top of all of that, Red Bull doesn't have a junior driver ready to make the step up from F1. They currently support drivers in F2, but Marco has stated that they have to win a title to get a seat in F1, and none of them look like they have a chance of winning that title this year. Even if one did, they would likely get their first chance in F1 with the Alpha Tauri team, meaning that Perez is safe until a driver is promoted to and excels at Alpha Tauri. The current Alpha Tauri lineup features Pierre Gasly, who might have already had and blown his chance at Red Bull, and then Yuki Tsunoda, who hasn't been consistent enough 
enough to get a sniff at a chance of a promotion. Gasly is known to be actively looking to move out of the Red Bull system, and he's one of the favorites to take the Alpine seat for the next season. This would open up Alpha Tauri's seat for the American IndyCar driver Colton Herta if the FIA grants him a super license. If Herta does get his seat and performs well next season, he could be a realistic heir to Perez. Herta would also be a smart choice when Perez retires or is sacked, as F1 is growing in popularity in the US, with the country set to host three F1 races next year, and Red Bull's title partner is an American company. In the meantime, Perez is scoring results that are good enough to the team and will likely contribute to the team winning their first Constructors' Championship since 2013 this year. The Constructors' Championship is more important than the Drivers' Championship in terms of prize money, and so Red Bull will value it greatly. It's important to have two drivers that get along well to win the Constructors' Championship, as teammate crashes such as Verstappen and Ricardo's at the 2018 Azerbaijan Grand Prix are very costly. The Red Bull management are also likely to consult Verstappen on his teammates, as they want to keep him happy for the entire entirety of his very long contract. Verstappen will be happy with Perez being his teammate, much like Hamilton was with Bottas, as he's a wingman who can aid him when needed, but rarely challenges him. This doesn't mean that Perez can't be impressive whilst at Red Bull. If Perez manages to finish second in the standings this season, it will be the first time in which he's finished as a vice champion. Even a third place finish in the standings would be the best of his career so far. Helping Red Bull to win the Constructors' Championship would also be impressive, even if he brings a lower percentage of points than Verstappen. In the recent races, Perez tends to be battling with the Mercedes and Ferrari drivers, but on days that Ferrari are fast and decide to actually be serious, Perez can struggle to beat Leclerc or Sainz. However, Red Bull are happy to have Perez and see him as a great team player. He has won a race in each of the last three seasons and is a valuable, experienced figure to have within the squad. Whilst he's often forgotten about with Verstappen's unreal performances, he plays an important role in the team and helped Max to win his 2021 title. And whilst it seems unlikely that he'll ever win a driver's championship of his own, all the drivers within F1 believe that they have what it takes if they only have a car that suits him, and until he loses this belief, he will give F1 his all. I don't really have an opinion piece for the end of this video like I usually do. Verstappen is just better than Perez, but do you think Perez could ever possibly win a championship? I think it's pretty unlikely. Anyway, with that being said, I'll see you next time.